amazing grace. The second you realize when you have inside, it's only just a matter of.
praise this morning. Hallelujah. Are you guys excited to be in the house of the Lord this morning? Oh, come on. Are you excited to be in the house of the Lord this morning? Hallelujah. Well, while we're standing, we're going to go ahead and uh, say what we believe uh, with the Believer's Creed. So if we want to turn to the screen and just say it with me. I am a believer. I believe in Almighty God the Father, the creator of all there is. I believe in Jesus Christ the Lord, God's only son, born of a virgin womb. I believe Christ died for me, returned to life, rose to heaven, and is coming back to earth again. I believe in the Holy Spirit and his power to help me be like Christ and do his work. I believe in the Bible, God's holy word, and all his promises to me of abundant and eternal life. I believe in the church, God's forever family. I am the righteousness of God in Christ because I am washed in the blood of the Lamb, filled with the Spirit, happy, holy, forgiven, and free. I am greatly blessed, highly favored, and deeply loved. I am a believer. <laughs> Amen. Well, you guys can go ahead and be seated. Um, real quick, if you are a first-time guest, we want to welcome you. So go ahead and give it up for our first-time guest. Give him a round of applause. We're so happy that you chose to join us this morning, and we have a gift for you. There is a card in front of you in the pew there. If you just fill that out, keep that with you, and turn it in at the coffee bar, we have a gift. It is a book written by our head pastor called The Champion Life. It's an awesome book. You want that, so fill out that card. Take it to the coffee bar at the end and get yourself that book. It's a great read. Also, I have one other announcement. This Friday, we have a blood drive going on, and I just found out that if you give blood, there's a $5 Amazon gift card involved, so you want that. I mean, you want that $5 Amazon gift card. So come give blood this Friday. Amen? Pastor. Thank you, Pastor Cole. That's our youth pastor. Hallelujah. He and his wife also lead our children's ministry as well as our Youth ministry. How many had an opportunity this morning to have a peek at the proposed new digital sign on your way into church or Faith Academy today? We are excited about it. Your pastor and board are proposing this. We are having a business meeting after Sunday morning church next Sunday morning, just at noon. Not in the evening, not at night, but just a brief meeting because uh, our Constitution and bylaws requires you to vote on anything of a major purchase. So join us after the service next Sunday morning. I want to show you a bit, of, a bit of a video. Now, if you look at this video, you can see it right there. As one correction to this video, actually the logo, Revive, and the logo at the top would actually be the left of this sign. It's always going to be closer to the highway. But you can see the incredible things we can do with this sign. That's a picture of the sign. It's about 10 feet high at its highest. And the sign that you saw, the digital sign, screen that you saw this morning was actually three by seven. Ours is going to be four by seven, so taller, deeper, and it's going to be powerful. I don't know if we had any more on that video, Kyle, but um, we have, yeah, if we can play this video, I'm not sure how, uh, where it ended, but I believe at the end of this video, it gives us some stats as to the numbers of cars that drive on this highway, on the on Beltline every year. I think it's like 950,000 or something like that. So there's a lot of cars that come by this um, belt line, and we're moving this sign over to the right. I'm sorry. If you're going out, it'll be on your right. If you're driving by more to, um, well, anyhow. <laughs> Where our sign is now, it's too close to Anderson Urgent Care. Every Sunday morning, I see visitors Dry, I look out my window, I see visitors drive into Anderson parking lot, do a little circle, come around, then drive up our, drive, our driveway. So the sign will be moved to much closer to our driveway, maybe even on the other side of our lane, our driveway here. So get excited about it, pray about it, give something above your tithes and offerings. Don't just take your tithes and offerings and say, put it towards the sign. That would not help us pay the air conditioning bill, right? So we have a few weeks to consider our giving. We're going to be doing some special fundraising on this. But next Sunday after the service, we'll give you all the details and have a congregational vote on a new digital sign that will be much more attractive, much more visible to welcome people to revive. Can you say praise the Lord for that? Great things. It's offering time. Praise the Lord. 
Valerie and I gave an extra $500 last week in the offering just towards a sign. We need another approximately $10,500 to purchase a sign. We'll give you all those details next Sunday. Isn't it an exciting thing to give into a church ministry that you know is going to preach the gospel? Did you know their children are blessed with great ministry? Pastor Megan brought her son into me last Sunday morning, the week before, and said, Jude, tell Pastor what ha- what, how, how earth was created. And he began to explain to me how God created the heavens and the earth and the light from the dark. How old is Jude? Three years old, being taught the Word of God in Faith Academy, in Revive Kids, and we're excited about that. So give us unto the Lord, and I know that God will bless you. Father, we ask you to bless this offering today. Take our needs, Father, and see that we're planting seeds this morning. In faith, we're bringing to you. Some are even sacrificing today, Lord, asking you to open the windows of heaven over their families, over their finances, over their needs, over their careers, over their cars and houses, Lord, over their bank accounts. So we ask you, Lord, to prosper your children, meet our needs, and pour out more blessing than we can even contain and we'll give you the praise for it in the name of Jesus. And everybody said, amen. I'll mention Israel to you for a few more weeks because time is flying. After October, I will not be talking about it as much because the price will go up. So if you're considering going to Israel with me January January 30th to February 8th next year, you need to consider right away. Only $2,577 from Chicago. A lot of flights, are, a lot of ministry trips to Israel are $3,500 or more, and then you have to get to New York on top of that. But we'll get you to Chicago. We'll take the church van. Pastor Cole will be driving it, or somebody will be. We'll get you to Chicago, and only for $2,577, come with me to Israel. It's going to be a powerful time. I love you. I love getting together with you, and I love worshiping God with you. Let's stand and give God the next few moments of praise. And say, Lord, you're my focus. You're my attention. You have my whole heart, soul, and mind now, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Lord.
let your praises arise for a moment this morning. Just lift your voice and say, Lord, I worship you. I praise you. Say hallelujah. Give him praise. Give him glory. He's worthy of it all. You are worthy of it all, Lord. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord, for your presence. Thank you for your healing presence. Thank you for your saving, redeeming presence. Thank you for your life-giving presence. Thank you that in your presence there is fullness of joy. We love you, Lord Jesus. 
thank you, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Before you're seated, turn to somebody and say, I'm about to be revived. How about you? I'm about to be revived. How about you? Praise the Lord. Don't you love our worship team, Pastor Megan and all the worshipers and instrumentalists? Praise God. This is the week that we celebrate National Seniors Day. If you are a senior or if you plan on someday being a senior, get excited about seniors. Now listen, think about this. I look forward to getting older because it beats the alternative. Now, I resist and I resent and I rebuke all the experts that I read all the time that say if you want to build an exciting, growing church, you need to target one little small area of society and just go after them. I don't believe that, and we're going to prove them wrong. How would you like to hear and get an invitation to a family reunion? Listen, we're getting all together for Thanksgiving. They're coming all from all over North America, but just make sure there's no teenagers or, or toddlers. Uh, we don't want any teenagers or toddlers at the family reunion. You're, you're out, right? How about a family reunion? Well, everybody's getting together. They're coming from all over the United States. All the family's coming, except we don't want anybody over 60 to come to the family reunion. Huh. No, we wouldn't want to be in a family like that, right? Well, here's a clue. I wouldn't want to be in a church like that. So we don't emphasize one category over another, but there's, there's a particular category that we just love who has built us, helped us, sustained us, and, and made us who we are. So we take one Sunday out of the year, really one week out of the year, to say, thank God for seniors. Amen. <laughs> now you've got a special outing on Tuesday. Talk to Joy Verning. Sign up. Go get a meal together on Tuesday. I, I, I almost qualify to join you, but I've got to be at a, a meeting in St. Louis. So you have a great, great time without me. But let me tell you about uh, Morris, who went to his doctor for his annual physical. He was 92 years of age, and he got a good physical. A couple of weeks later, the doctor met him on the street, and he had a beautiful, young, gorgeous woman on his arm. And the doctor said, well, looks like you're doing okay, Morris. He said, yes, I took your advice. I got a hot mama, and I'm being cheerful. And the doctor said, that's not what I said. I said, you've got a heart murmur, and you need to be careful. Pay attention. And then there was Morris's friend, 95 years of age. They were talking. He and Morris was talking. Morris said, how you doing, my friend? He said, great, I'm getting married next week. You're getting married? Do I know her? No, you don't know her. Oh, is she good looking? No, not much, no. Well, does she have a good personality? No, no, no. No, she doesn't. Well, can she cook? No, no, can't. Well, why are you getting married? She can drive. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> well, enough of that. What do we do every Sunday morning? Say it with me. We are loving the Word. We are learning the Word so that we can live the Word. Holy Spirit, speak to us. Lord, seniors and teenagers, and those of us somewhere in the middle, Lord, we need this Word today. So grasp our hearts, our minds, our understanding Get a hold of us, Lord, and may we leave here encouraged and revived today by the power of your Holy Spirit. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. And everybody said, we're continuing our series called God is Faithful. God is Faithful. If you didn't, well, we didn't record, did we record that service last week? No, we didn't. The one before that, watch it online. God is Faithful. And God is Faithful to those who choose to serve him all of their lives. I was 16 years of age. It was 1978, and I was preaching in Montreal, Canada, a youth crusade. I preached Friday night, and Saturday morning, and Saturday night, Sunday morning, and Sunday night, and I noticed that every service, including the youth services, 
there was a woman who had to be in her 90s that came and sat at the back of every service. Sunday night, she approached me, 16-year-old preacher. She, she said, young man, can I tell you why I'm here and what I want you to do? I said, please do. She said, I was a young girl in the church. Gave my heart to Jesus as a young girl, but my teenage years came and I walked away from God. And I lived for the devil and lived for myself. But God was so merciful and gracious. I came back to Christ because he took me back when I was 75 years of age. And I've been living for Jesus now for 20 years, 95 years of age. I said, that's wonderful. She said, no, it's not. I said, what? She said, no, I want you for the rest of your life, wherever you preach. She said, I tell every preacher I can this, that it's not worth it to give up your faith. My life is a life of 60 years of regret and shame. What I could have done for Jesus, what I could have done for the kingdom, how many more people would be living for Jesus if I had have lived my life for Christ all of my life? Would you tell them, please? And she grabbed my lapel and said, would you tell them, please? So all these years later, Lord help me, 40-some years later, I'm still telling that story. I'm sure she's in heaven now. But she wanted you to know, don't, don't leave him. It's not worth it. God is faithful. Do you know that heroes come in all ages? I'm going to celebrate seniors today, so let me tell you that Dorothy Hirsch, never heard of her, now you have. She went to the North Pole for the first time when she was 89 years of age. Winston Churchill became Prime Minister of England at the age of 65. Colonel Sanders started Kentucky Fried Chicken at 65. John Glenn went back to space when he was 77 years of age and spent nine days on the space shuttle. Grandma Moses, who became a, an amazing artist, a best-selling artist, she picked up the paintbrush and started painting at 76. And Benjamin Franklin signed the United States Constitution along with others when he was 81 years of age. Anybody 40 feeling a little tired right now? <laughs> Ronald Reagan became the oldest man to ever assume the presidency of the United States at the age of 69. Until, that is, Donald Trump came along at the age of 70. Just, just maybe a little curious here. Two of my favorite presidents in all of U.S. history were actually the oldest. Now, that might tell us something. Amazing, right? But here's what the Bible says, Psalm 37, 25. I've been young. Anybody been young? <laughs> I've been young, and now I'm old, but I've never seen the righteous forsaken or a seed begging for bread. I've seen the righteous have some trouble. I've seen the righteous have some affliction, but the Lord delivers him out of it all. I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor a seed begging for bread. Why? Because God is faithful. Jesus is real. The gospel is truth, and it's worth living your long life in the presence of God. God is faithful. Go to Titus with me. Here's some instruction for all of us. Teach the older men to exercise self-control. To live worthy of respect and to live wisely. Amen, men? <laughs> they must have sound faith and be filled with love and patience. Older men ought to be filled with love and patience. Similarly, teach the older women to live in a way that honors God. They must not slander, must not slander others, or be given to much wine. Instead, they should, the older women, should teach others what is good. Are you teaching? Well, nobody's ever asked me to teach. Your life is a lesson. You're teaching every time you open your mouth. You're teaching by example and by inspiration. These older women must train the younger women 
to love their husbands and their children, to live wisely and be pure, to work in their homes, to do good, to be submissive to their husbands, then they will not bring shame on the word of God. See, you don't graduate from service because you reach a certain age. In fact, when you reach a certain age, I believe there's even more of a responsibility for you to be a teacher of the younger, to be an example. God is faithful. The gospel is the truth. Jesus is real, and he can change lives. You know, all of us, we should be paying attention to three different people in our lives. Are you paying attention? Well, who are you paying attention to? You ought to be paying attention to three different people. You ought to be paying attention to people that are older than you. You ought to be paying attention to people who have been here longer than you. They have experience, right? They've learned some lessons. They've developed levels of wisdom and loyalty and consistency and faith. And how have these older people learned all this? Through years of tears and battles and strife and stuff and life. I ought to be listening to some people who have been here ahead of me. They have such treasure of life and experience. Listen to someone that's older than you. But secondly, all of us should be listening to someone who is our peer, someone who's facing the same battles that we are, going through the same things you are. Here's a lesson. Don't bear your burdens alone. Find somebody that's at the same stage of, of life as you are and say, how you coping, my friend? Sister, how you making it? Brother, how you doing it? Let's, let's learn together and let's grow together. Would you agree with all that? We ought to be listening to some older folks, right? You ought to be listening to somebody at your level. But here's something most of us have to learn. We ought to be listening to somebody younger than us too. Mm. Now, they might not have the maturity or the experience that we have, but they have probably some knowledge and some technical skills that we need. <laughs> I'll never forget, I was sitting in my office, this was years ago in Niagara Falls, pastoring in Canada, and it was early in the computer stage, and I was so excited because I got my first big computer that was going to sit on my desk and, and the big box underneath the desk, and I was going to try to figure it out. And my son, seven or eight years old, Jordan, came in the room and said, Dad, let's put the CPU right here. And I said, what's the CPU? <laughs> he said, that's a central processing unit. That's the, where the, well, Dad, let me just do it for you. And that's been the story of my life, right? The younger, no stuff. Let them do it. Hmm. Listen to someone's older. Listen to someone beside you and listen to someone younger. But how many love the Word of God? How many believe the Word of God? How many believe the Word of God gives us direction for success in life? Well, here's something that um, Pastor Megan actually opened the service with. It was on the screen. She asked me about it earlier. I said, I'm preaching on it. Go ahead. Listen to this. Psalm 92, 12 to 15. The righteous shall flourish like a palm tree. They shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon, those who are planted in the house of the Lord. Those who are planted in the house of the Lord. Those who are planted in the house of the Lord. I love it when I go into the skip record mode where it just keeps going. Those who are planted in the house. Those who are planted in the Those who are planted in the house of the Lord. putting down roots in God's house. They, those who are planted in the house of the Lord, they shall flourish in the courts of our God. You want to grow strong in God's presence? Get yourself in the house of God. 
Get out to prayer meeting. Get out to Wednesday night. Get out to Wednesday morning. Get in the house of God. Make it consistent. Make it a habit. Put it on your schedule. We don't miss church. Why? Because we're planted in the house of the Lord. They shall flourish in the courts of God. They, those who are planted in the house of the Lord, shall still bear fruit in old age. Woo! They shall be fresh and flourishing. These who are planted in the house of the Lord, they will declare in their old age, the Lord is righteous, he is my rock, and there's no evil in him. Can somebody say praise God? That's his word. I can point with my finger all over this congregation today. Some who are still flourishing because they determined a long time ago to get planted in the house of the Lord. And God honors his word because God is faithful. Jesus is real. The gospel is truth. And it's worth a long life of serving him. Can you say amen? Heard a story just this week. It's a powerful principle. Pastor Enrique Sanchez, pastors, ministers in Des Plaines, Illinois. And he was on that plane that crashed in Mexico July 18th, just this year. 103 people on that plane, and all of them survived. But he preached in his church in Chicago, uh, Des Plaines, a couple of weeks ago, and he made this statement. He said, the real miracle is not that 103 people survived the plane crash. The real miracle was that there were so many survivors rushing back into the burning plane to help others survive. Survivors helping others survive. Think about it. Survivors helping others survive. Isn't that our calling? Isn't that our story? Isn't that our example? We're just survivors. Can you say amen? Now we've survived by the grace of God. We've survived by the mercy of God. We've survived by the blood of Christ. We've survived by the power of the word of God. We've survived because we put our trust and our hope in God who never fails us. But what are we doing? We're rushing back out into the burning world as a survivor helping somebody else survive. That's my calling. That's your calling. Survivors helping others survive. That is a powerful metaphor of our lives and our calling, our gifting and our anointing in the church, in our community, in the kingdom. Survivors helping others survive because God is faithful, because Jesus is real. The gospel is the truth. Powerful story that I share about once every three or four years. I leave it just long enough that you've forgotten about it and you'll think it's a brand new story. It's called The Keeper of the Springs. The story is told of an old man that lived high in the Alps above an Austrian village. He'd been hired years before to keep the brooks and the springs up in the mountain clear and clean. So it was his job. He was paid to do it. But no one ever saw him do it. He kept the springs and the brooks clear. So the village down below had fresh, cool, bubbling water flowing down out of the mountains. Swans graced the river. Mills ran on the river because of the flowing water. Restaurants were built and vacationers and tourists came to this beautiful mountainside village. Life was good. People were happy. But one month the town council got together and some wise guy said, wait a minute, we're paying this keeper of the springs up in the mountain. Has anybody ever seen him? What good's he doing for our community? Uh, we can probably save a few dollars. Just let's stop paying the keeper of the springs. We don't need him. We're, we're doing just fine. 
So they stopped paying the keeper of the springs. A couple of weeks, nobody noticed anything. But a few weeks later, fall came and they started seeing a little bit of silt build up in the brooks. They started seeing twigs and it was a week after that they, they noticed there was some kind of sludge building up around the mills and then they noticed that the water stopped flowing and the mills had to stop turning because there wasn't enough water flow. And eventually they, they noticed a stench and a smell from the, from the brooks and the tourists went away and the swans flew away and the village they realized was dying and they got together and called an emergency meeting and said, wait a minute, maybe we made a mistake. Maybe, maybe we should rehire that keeper of the springs they rehired him, and the next spring, the water were clean, and the swans returned. The mills were turning. And life came back, and diseases left. Why? Because they remembered the keeper of the spring was important. And you, my friend, you and I, we are keepers of the spring. Our culture, our society, the world around us depends upon Christians to be salt and light and truth bearers to a world that is desperately in need of grace and springs of living water. If we don't do our part, death encroaches. Sickness, disease, spiritual poverty is released in a society where no one's keeping the springs. So today I want to thank God for every senior who's kept the spring all these years, who's kept the word of God all these generations. Some of you for 30, 40, 50 years, you've kept worshiping God. They changed the tunes of the songs. They brought in some new songs. And you've been here through a few pastors, haven't you? Eight years now, but I'm staying. Hallelujah. Keepers of the spring realize that their payday is coming. They're working for the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Keepers of the spring. Today I'm going to pray for seniors, especially. I'm going to pray a five-fold blessing on you. I'm going to pray for your faith, your spiritual life to be rejuvenated. I'm going to pray for your physical health. I'm going to pray for an anointing upon your body. I'm going to believe that God's a healer. God is a one who strengthens. I'm going to pray for your finances. Somebody says, somebody says oh, I'm on a fixed income. I believe God can fix your fixed income. So it's, not, so it's more fixed than you think it's fixed. <laughs> I'm going to pray for your family and your friends. I'm going to pray for your emotional health. I'm going to pray that you are strong in the Lord and that you will realize your responsibility to keep the springs. But then I'm going to ask you, seniors, to pray for us, to prophesy over us, to understand the calling of God on your life. If you're somebody that served God for a few decades... You are living proof. You are evidence that God is faithful. There's a whole generation in front of you that needs to see that and hear your story and your testimony. I'm getting close to my close. I didn't say I was closing. You didn't hear that. I said I'm getting close to my close with this scripture. Oh God, you have taught me from my youth. Can I get a witness? Oh God, you have led me and taught me from the time I was a boy, a young girl. You've taught me from my youth. And to this day, years later, decades later, they said it wouldn't last. They said I wouldn't last. The devil tried to take me out five times. Anybody got a story? <laughs> but to this day, I'm declaring your wondrous works. Now also, Lord... 
when I'm old and gray-headed, do not forsake me. Don't forsake me, God. Don't leave me now until I declare your strength to this generation, your power to everyone that is to come. That's my prayer. I've got one grandson and one granddaughter on the way and 12 more somewhere in the ethos that God's going to bless them. Coming soon sometime. But that's my heart, oh God. Oh God, don't forsake me now. I want to have something to transfer to my grandchildren, to prophesy into their life, to seed into their lives. I want my great grandchildren to serve God. Everybody, would you stand with me? I want to pray an anointed prayer over every senior. And, and we don't know what's a senior. I got my first senior's discount a few weeks ago. Hallelujah. <laughs> but, <laughs> and, and, and we're not exactly sure what a, what a senior is. They tell, us, they tell us on your stage, make sure you get lots of young people on your stage, on your worship team. And, and we do. But we also have Melody McKenzie on the stage too. Somebody say, <laughs> praise God. She's my age. That's why I can pick on her. I said she's my age. That's why I can pick on her. I'm on this stage too. Hello. I want an anointing in my life and in this church that children are jealous for. I want to be so close to God that teenagers say, what have you got? Don't forsake me now, God, till I declare your power to the generation that's going to come. So I just pick an age. I just pick an age, okay? Out of the air, 65. Okay, 65. If you're 65 or older, would you come down right now? 65 and older. And I want you to make a line facing me straight across here. Everybody's coming down is 65 or older and willing to admit it. Hallelujah. Make a line straight across here. So some of you need, need to come over here. Hallelujah. I don't know. Can we put that scripture back up on the screen, brother? How many, how many of you can say, oh, God, you've taught me from my youth? Yeah. And to this day, I will not stop. I will not back up. I will not, I will not be silent. I continue to declare your wondrous works. Right now, God. So now when I'm old and gray-headed, I pray you don't feel old. It's okay to feel older, but not old. Because you that's right. Because we still got some living to do. Don't forsake me now, God, until I declare your strength to this generation. I'm going to declare your power everyone that is to come. Some of us that are getting closer to 65, you want to include yourself in this prayer, it's okay, you can do that. Some of you plan on being 65 someday. Include yourself in this prayer. Every, every senior saint, lift your hand to heaven and say, Lord, I receive fresh anointing right now to be a witness of your resurrection power. To this generation, God, to my children, to my grandchildren, to my great-grandchildren, Lord, to my nieces and nephews, Lord. I declare your strength 
I declare your power to my generations. Can we sing, Great is thy faithfulness? Great is thy faithfulness.